Hello and good evening. Let's do a couple examples here. Uh, actually, it looks like six examples on the beef market uh, using the simple supply and demand uh, model that we've built before. Okay, so what we do is we draw uh, price and quantity. So I guess you could say mind your P's and Q's. That's a good way to think about it. And we draw our oof ugly there we go and don't forget the San Diego okay so we've got some kind of equilibrium price Get a little straighter there okay equilibrium price at P star okay so this is the beef market now for context I've uh, chosen the beef market because the United States here of which many of our students here are in taking classes here uh, is the number one producer of beef worldwide okay so that's important because uh, number one on the supply okay of beef all right so the first one is major drought in the Midwest USA so we have to ask ourselves really is that going to change the behavior of the folks on the supply curve of which case it'll change some of the uh, one of the determinants of, of supply, or will it change the behavior of the folks on the demand curve, the, the buyers of the, the beef? Okay, and so these these are the changes to tribe. Okay, uh, and in this case, uh, the first one is uh, the the buyers don't really care about the drought in the Midwest. I mean, they might feel sad about it, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, the but the ranchers in the Midwest or the the uh, folks that run the um, the, the livestock, um, <clears throat> whatever that's called, the high high utilization, not high utilization, high. Uh, you can look it up. There's <laughs> there's a term for it. Um, but anyway, so it's going to cause them to have leaner beef, and so I'll draw that in red here. This is going to cause a shift to the left. Okay. Now at this lower price, we're out of equilibrium. So in order to get back to equilibrium, price is going to have to go up. And so this first one is a supply decrease. Okay, we're we'll going write it something like that because the price of production is going to get more expensive. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next one. Let's see if I can do it this way. Yes. Okay. Median wage in China increases. So China, is, we're going to assume, is a big buyer of beef. Okay, so this is going to cause an increase in the demand, the global demand. This is the global market for beef. So it's going to push it up. Um, I would probably argue that it's this one. Okay, uh, you might say no. That's actually pretty good. There's a uh, buyers that are that are getting wealthier and they might want beef so that's going to be that answer for number two and let's erase that the answer for number three consumers think price of beef will increase next quarter okay so uh, there's an expectations here and an expectations here but since it says consumers they're the ones that buy the beef so this is going to change the demand curve so if I think that the price of beef will fall next quarter I'm going to actually decrease my demand. One thing that helps before you even screw around with the graph, just think about what's what's going to change here. It's going to decrease the demand, right? So now I'm going to draw my demand, and I'm going to go closer to the zero, right? So, so there we go. Those are sort of arrows there. This is going to cause a decrease in demand, knocking down the equilibrium price. So that's that's number three, due to an expectations of future price. Next, global price of chicken doubles. So chicken gets more expensive. Chicken is a substitute for beef. So this is a related good. Okay, if chicken gets more expensive, it's going to increase the global demand for beef, pushing the price up. And this is also going to push the quantity at equilibrium up. Okay, so that's important to remember too. The the, the beef, uh, the ranchers and so forth, livestock producers, they're gonna they're gonna want to produce more. Okay. Uh, next, further globalization. So globalization means uh, seeking out new trading partners for exports and imports. 
Uh, and so this means actually there's going to be more buyers for U.S. beef. And if there's more buyers, this means more demand, okay? Because they're going to be competing for that beef. This is going to increase the demand and increase the price. Okay, that's that's this guy right here. That's that's really what globalization means. It, it does mean you're going to open yourself up to more imports, but also more exports. So if you're a country like the United States in the beef market, it's actually really good news for you. Okay. And finally, last one, automation. So we've uh, somehow increased the process of producing uh, beef in the packing industry. This is an increase in technology. This is going to change the supply side. It's going to increase the supply. It's going to make it easier to supply those products. It's going to increase here on our graph. Why do we care about this? Well, we can draw that a little straighter there. Okay, this is going to push you down the price of of beef for this one. Okay, so those are those are some examples on uh, supply and demand for the beef market. Beef, it's what's for dinner.